Hello, this is Mr. Beck with iMac, which stands for Interactive Media Applications at Kruger Middle School. I'm a technology teacher. This is lesson three in our series on the Blender. If you're a student in my class and you missed this lesson, um, this is going to help you out. If you're not in my class and you're new to the Blender, you might just pick a few things up here. So in the second lesson, we created a basic project that looks like this. It has a cube on the bottom and there is a sphere on the top. Now right now I am looking at this through the camera and I can always go to my camera view by clicking the zero on the number pad. So what we're going to do with this lesson is we're going to move out of the camera and once again you can select objects by right clicking on them. So I'm going to make sure the camera is selected. I'm going to use the G to grab the camera and I'm going to swing it around to the other side of the cube and I'm going to move it now so it is below the cube on the other side. Uh, the next move is to hit the R key and after I hit the R you can choose which axis you would like the uh, rotation to take place on so I'm going to click Z and I'm going to swing the camera around so it's pointing approximately towards the, towards the cube. I'm going to click R and then I'm going to click X and I'm going to bring it up. Now I'm going to click 0 and I should be able to see the object the camera is pointing at. Um, we need to get it centered within the camera, so I'm going to click R once again. I'm going to center it. I'm going to click R, and I'm going to follow that up with X. That's not what I want. How about Z? There we go. I'm going to click R, and I'm going to follow that up with Y. I'm going to click R again. I'm going to click Y. And now I've got my object centered approximately within the camera. The camera is underneath the object looking up at one of the corners. Um, the next step that we're going to take is we're going to move out of the camera view and we're going to position the red and white crosshair in between the camera and the cube. By rotating around I can click and make sure that that crosshair is exactly where I want it to be. The next move is to add a new light source. So I'm going to click Add Lamp and I'm going to choose Sun. And when I do that, it creates a new light source right there. And you can tell that this is a, the Sun light source is a directional light source. The dotted line indicates the direction in which uh, the light is shining. And right now, the light is not shining on the cube. So I am going to hit the R button. And once again, choose an axis like Z. And I'm going to swing it around underneath the cube. Then I'm going to click R. And I'm going to choose Y. Bring it up and let's rotate around and see if we're on the cube yet. Not quite. I'm going to click R. Let's see X. Oops. No. R. X. How about Z? Here we go. Almost. I'm going to click R. I'm going to choose Y. There we go. And now I've got my spotlight shining directly on the cube. Okay, so I've got my camera I've got my cube and now I've got a light source that is pointing at the cube. That's all there is to it. You need to save your file, file, save as, and if you are unsure where to save it, you need to raise your hand at this time and ask me. If you hit F12, that did not work on my computer. If you hit F12, you should see a picture come up and the cube will look very bright because this spotlight is shining directly on it. Okay, that's it for lesson three. Thanks for watching.